So, welcome back. In order to start sending data, we have to type out the data function, the function that would set the um the proper register requirement in place to allow us to send data. So we'll just write it here, it's very quick. Let's declare it void LCD data. Now let's put it down here close to the LCD command. I'll just put it here, I'll call it void lcd underscore data and just like the lcd command this one takes one argument and this argument is of type unsigned character and we call it data and this is the data we want to write to the lcd and we said in order to send data to the lcd we have to set the rs pin of the lcd to one in order to allow the internal shift registers of the LCD to choose the um the data register. So that's what we do here. We start by selecting the data register, and all we have to do is write to the GPIO port A, GPIO A data. And don't let this confuse you. GPIO A data and this data has nothing in common. This data register that we want to write to is in the internal you know in the internals of the LCD the LCD has two registers inside it has one for command and one for data and we select them and then we write command or select and write data and this one here is the basic way of writing to a GPIO pot pin we call it GPIO data um, I hope you get that please whatever you do not understand leave it in the comment box below Thank you. So let's continue. So GPIOA data, we write the value 0x202. And basically what this means, let me give you the um the binary form. The binary form is this um 0010 and 1234. Um yeah, of course this is a 32-bit value or it's supposed to be a 32-bit value but all these preceding zeros can be cleaned and we can shorten a hair and it would work perfectly that's why we keep on writing here that's why we don't write all the other numbers um so yeah and what this means is rs which is the um the register select rs equals one enable pin equals zero and then rw equals zero so remember rs um let's just check here this is pa0 pa1 pa2 pa3 pa4 pa5 when you check your physical connection you'd realize that you connected the rs pin to pa5 that is why we've changed this pa5 to one here in order to set it high to um select the data register inside the lcd so yeah so once we select the data register, we write our data and we do this by assigning the argument to this um, GPIO pin, GPIO A data um, equals data. Basically, it's this local variable here, data that we assign in here. And after we do that, we send a pulse by enabling pin E for a brief moment. Um, and what we do is GPIO A data, GPIO A data, then we add this. Don't forget to do this, um, this vertical line and equal to, if, if you don't put this vertical line and you write directly to it, remember they are the same register, they share the same register. So when we write directly, we're changing all the values of the register if we are to write without this line and then we just write 0x if we are to write just 0x sorry 0x 80 if we are to write just this this what is going to happen like always let me break it down to binary for you um what is going to happen is we're going to have 100 1234 and as you know a0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7. So this is the new value. But as you can see, this value has 
has disabled the setting that we created earlier and we want to keep this in order to keep this we do this we use the R operator and we put a vertical line so when we put this vertical line this value here this previous setting of the value is added to this one um, conclusive this previous uh, setting is added like this and an all operation is performed when we perform um, the answer becomes as you can guess it becomes 1 0 1 remember this one here enters here and then the rest are still just 0 0 uh, that is why we put this line here also, um, if you don't quite get this, there is a course on the basics of embedded C cortex programming, which you can take a quick look at. It explains these things in details and it makes programming really easy and robust. Um, so that being said, let's continue. Um, we have this, we've sent the pulse and just like we did, we delayed micro bits. Yeah, let's delay zero here which we can play with or manipulate this value here then finally we set it back to 00, zero gpioa data register because 0x zero 00, zero. and then and then we delay again if we want it's always good to be given bits of delay Usually the best way is to give the minimum amount of delay as you go on to see how how well the microcontroller would catch up or how well the LCD will catch up with the microcontroller and then you start reducing the amount of delay gradually till it still works in order not to slow down the computer. So you test, you reduce the amount of delays gradually. So when we run it and it works, we might need to reduce some of this delay amount and when the program still works which means it's fine um so now everything is set what we have to do now is type out our data so the first thing we do um we have to clear the screen and set the cursor home and remember we call the command to do this for us let's let's use this first command first LCD command 0x01 this clears the screen LCD command 0x08 this sets the cursor home now this the screen is clear the cursor is set home and let's delay a bit just to allow these commands to finish executing okay good how about we compile and see whether the compiler agrees with what we've written um, one warning it's probably because of no new line it's probably down here it should work now zero warnings okay so the compiler agrees with what we've written that is great um, so let's just put some basic data here remember data is transferred one character at a time do not worry I know that sounds a bit cumbersome to type one character at a time in the next lesson I'll show you a function would engineer a function that would allow us to type sentences at once so um, let's play with our data and see basically I'm going to call the LCD data How come we cannot see it here? Where are you, LCD data? So um, the reason why LCD data is this way and we couldn't find it in the helper was because, as you can guess, we did not add the prototype up there. So just like we did for all of our functions, let's copy this and add it here as a function prototype now the only beef is that this one here requires an argument and I'm going to put an argument here C like this and the function works so 
let's try this I'm just going to um, try CM for cortex M um, so as we said you can part your data with very very minimum delays to allow the LCD to catch up with the microcontroller so I put a delay here and then I call the LCD data again and then write the second character which is the M okay it should work let's delay micro in order to go back to the top of the loop let's see so let's compile this and download onto our board and see what happens okay zero errors zero warnings okay it's downloaded i hope you've downloaded on your board so please plug in your board download it and then reset your mcu the microcontroller to see what happens so mine isn't working and i guess yours isn't working as well let's see what might be wrong given the speed at which we typed out this long code we might have omitted or mistyped something um, let's start from the top here our prototypes look like they are in order um, let's see here okay let's increase this delay a bit to millisecond okay and then let's come here I suspect the error will be here because nothing at all changes on the board it has to be the initialization okay let's see the first one GPIO this one here this one here opens the clock for port A this one opens the clock for port B aha uh -huh. there is a problem here okay how about we pause the video and let's see whether you can figure out what the problem is it's a simple one hmm as you can see um, we dealt with the same issue here remember when we got here and I was explaining I said if we write to this register directly by using just the equal sign we change in all the values of the register so therefore when we get here and we write this new value we wouldn't have our RS selected therefore we had to use this it's the same thing happening here the RCGC GPIO register the um, this register is the same but there are various bits inside to enable different GPIO ports so what we did here was we enabled port A and what we got here we disabled port A and enabled port B but what we want is to enable them both so we can just use the OR operator to add this line here and then it would enable it so this problem is solved let's see what else we might have lingering around down there um, let's see aha there is another one um, look at this line this line looks okay but it is very problematic actually um, over here what we did was we selected um, we made RS equals to 1 using GPIOA because we connected our LCD control registers to the GPIOA so the control registers are used for just selection only and the data registers are used for writing data and data is in the form of command data and actual data so when we write 0x01 which is to um, to enable the screen or to clear the screen this 0x01 is a form of data which is transmitted to the command register and we do that by telling the LCD we want the command register active and then we transmit data to it but what we did here was we use the um I should also point out that we use the um the pins the data pins d0 through d7 to transmit any form of data whether the data is actual data or it's command data we use these pins but we made the mistake of trying to write data to the um the control the control port which is which is gpioa actually it should be gpiop this is how data is transmitted 
because we've connected our 8-bit data line to port uh, to port B. So let's recap what we just did. So we came here, we selected uh, we selected the um the LCD data register, and we did this by setting RS to one, and then we wrote data. We put data in the data bus, and basically we made GPIOB our data bus, and then we put our data there. So I know what might seem confusing is we using the name data and command. Meanwhile, command actually is a type of data. So the same thing is affecting this function that we wrote over here we selected r0 the only difference between this and this should be r0 actually so we selected r0 and we have to write a command to it and remember this command also has to be put in the data bus and sent to the um the command register inside the r0 and we designated port b as our data bus but we forgot we got excited and kept typing and typing so yeah, this line here should be GPIOB data and this line here should be data. Anyway, yeah, if anything, this error has taught us to pay more attention. And one last thing I realized right now was um, we said we have to send a pulse through pin E. What we did is we enabled it, we didn't disable it, meaning we did not actually send a pulse through it. We kept it enabled in order to send a pulse we just enable and disable very briefly and we do this by setting this data register back to 0x00 and everything should work perfectly now um, let's compile and let the compiler judge okay so mine is working as you can see it's working and the potential meter for adjusting the contrast it's this little one I have here by turning it the contrast changes yeah all we have to do is play with the values in the um in the data let's try to extend the amount of data we transmit and try to play around with the delay values a bit yeah so see you in the next lesson